Five years after purchasing the game, and I'm finally getting around to beating it. Knack for the most part received ho-hum reviews. Fine for a launch game, but really not much more. Knack definitely has its faults that tend to come with most launch games, but overall, I don't think it's a bad little game. Let's take a deeper look. Knack is set in the world where humans and goblins coexist. At some point, both had fought in a crystals war, causing the goblins' advancement to come to a halt. The goblins after the war had become more primitive in terms of technology, but now have been able to somehow catch up to the humans by use of relics to drastically upgrade their military. The relics are the power source for humankind and have come from an earlier civilization that they don't know much about. The story follows you, Knack, who has been created by Dr. Vargas via the ancient relics to battle the goblins who have been attacking humans with their new arsenal. Mix this with an evil company set on world domination, and the story for the most part is, is good but generic. The characters themselves are pretty good. Dr. Vargas is almost like a father figure who is so obsessed with the advancement of science through the relics that he tends to have tunnel vision when it comes to the problems that he and his friends are facing. Lucas is the nephew of Dr. Vargas. His parents had died leaving him in the care of his uncle. Lucas is the assistant who tries to prove his worth in the group, Dr. Vargas in particular. He wants his uncle to think of him as a valuable asset to the group and is always questioning his uncle's decisions. Then you have Ryder who is the muscle slash explorer of the group. He is a friend of Dr. Vargas and helps him get into the more physically difficult areas. Think Launchpad from DuckTales but without like the clumsy idiot aspect. He also acts as the voice of compromise between Dr. Vargas and Lucas's differing opinions. His looks remind me a lot of Simon Belmont from the Captain N series. I do have some issues with Nack's character. His motivation for helping humans never really made sense to me in the story. Nack never really questions his role and he just kind of does what he's told. He was brought to life by Dr. Vargas to act as a slave really and defeat the goblins and he does so happily. A lot of times he reminded me of Optimus Prime talking about protecting the human race. There were times in the story where you wonder if the humans were really not so good in the past in regards to the war with the goblins and I thought that Nack maybe would have picked up on this, causing him to have some sort of moral dilemma, but it never happened. Also, I don't really care for his voice. They got the guy who played Locke in Halo 5, and don't get me wrong, he sounds like a badass, but I just felt it didn't really, you know, match the character or the tone of the rest of the game. It's like listening to a Saturday morning cartoon, and then a Spartan steps into the scene. Honestly, I was kind of surprised Nack had a voice at all. Ooh. You're gonna need to stay far back so you don't get electrocuted. Better yet, I'll meet you up top that hill. I'm guessing that's where we'll find Gundahar. I think the graphics are pretty good for a launch game. The lighting in the outdoor environments look good, and you can tell that they were really showing off the particle effects with Knack himself being made up of a bunch of little pieces, as well as the armor and other things breaking off enemies when they're hit. As you play through Knack, you start to notice, however, that the levels begin to look a little bit samey. You have a lot of levels set in different mines as well as outdoor rocky environments with some vegetation. Sometimes I felt I was playing the same level with some slight changes to the graphical assets. It doesn't look as good as some of the platformers that came after it, but I think it does showcase in some ways what the PS4 could do. The art style animation remind me of Ratchet and Clank, while there are hints of Crash Bandicoot in the level design and static camera angles. There were many sections where you're heading down a very narrow path like in Bandicoot or running towards the camera in an attempt to escape a particular enemy. When it comes to the character design, I don't really care for the look of Knack. I like the idea of how he works with his ability to grow and shrink, but I just honestly I don't care for the look of him. His design seems like he never really got past the early development stages. It's just, it's just not really that appealing to me. Other characters look good though, and I really appreciate the correct lip syncing of the characters in the cutscenes. She stopped me from putting some of my crazier plans into action. Lucas, I'm so sorry I got us into this mess. This is one of the games that received a PlayStation Pro patch. When you launch the game, you have the option to run the game in either a high frame rate mode or a higher resolution. I started playing with the resolution setting, but later switched to the higher frame rate. I'm not sure what the resolution is on the graphics mode, but my guess it's in the typical pro range of 1440p to 1800p. It's definitely not 4K, but you will be able to see a difference when compared to the regular 1080p. According to Digital Foundry, the frame rate seems to hover around 40 frames per second on the resolution mode, and the mid 50s to 60 frames on the frame rate mode. Having used both modes, I can say it's really all down to preference. 
The higher frame rate mode is more responsive control wise, but the resolution mode feels responsive enough and the bump to resolution is quite noticeable. The gameplay in Knack is kind of a mix of Ratchet and Clank, Crash Bandicoot with a simple combat system. One of the things that does bother me though is how they have incorporated Knack's growing and shrinking in the game. Knack's ability to grow and shrink is dictated more by the game than you, and by that I mean it doesn't matter how many times you get hit or die, you will always be for the most part the size the game intends you to be at that moment in the level. I guess you could go out of your way and not collect relics, but at some point the game is going to make sure that you're a certain size for a particular challenge. You can be collecting relics the entire level and not grow that much, and then some random stash will cause you to grow in size. It would have been really cool if by avoiding damage and finding secret stashes of relics you could be this massive force, or on the other hand, taking a lot of hits and you'll be stuck as a small knack with a small health bar and less attack power. And this ties into another issue I had with knack, which is the game's difficulty. Enemies tend to take multiple hits depending on the size of a knack to defeat. The enemies themselves are pretty strong and can often kill you in one to two hits. There were many times when I was stuck fighting a particular combination of enemies. I would try to rush a group of melee goblins and then get hit by archers in the back. There's a dodge mechanic that works against certain attacks, but there's not a specific parry or block ability. Having the ability to at least parry definitely would have helped the combat, and I would not have gotten so tired of running around in circles avoiding attacks, just waiting for an enemy's animation to finish so I could attack. The difficulty seems great, but it gets nerfed by the lack of punishment for dying. Die as many times as you want. You will always have to start back at the nearest checkpoint and never lose any of the size that you have. They also give you a healthy amount of energy to perform super attacks, which clear the room, so you always kind of have an easy button if things get tough. Having a limited number of lives per chapter, as well as penalties for losing relics, could have really bumped up the fun factor for me at least. They also could have shortened the levels by doing this, making the game feel a little less monotonous. When I started playing Knack, I thought everyone was completely wrong and this was a really great game. Well, Knack shows the importance of finishing a game before you give an opinion on it. Not to say the game's bad, but the repetitiveness of the levels and the battle system start to really show by chapter 8. And by chapter 10, I was really just ready for the game to end. It tries to keep things fresh by adding new enemies with different attacks, but you do the same thing over and over again. Go into an area slash room and defeat a set amount of enemies, which causes a barricade to lower, allowing you to move on to the next room. This is followed by a game cutscene of Nat climbing something and looking at the next section. And Marty, you're making noise. Oh, oops. Sorry, Dad. Sometimes you'll enter a larger area with three paths that need to be completed by hitting a switch, but you're doing the same thing just on a different layout. They have added some sections where Knack gets invisibility, ice shards, wood blocks, etc. But they seem really underdeveloped. They tend to be only for a particular challenge in a section of the game, and not something that you learn and repeat throughout. For example, the invisibility mechanic is only used in maybe two areas to get past security lasers and to shrink in order to get into vents. It doesn't work at all on enemies, and you don't ever use it past those particular sections. I'm sure that they were under time constraints due to it being a launch game, so certain mechanics couldn't be expanded upon, but it does seem like a missed opportunity. Okay, I have to talk about co-op mode. It, it had to be a last minute addition. The co-op is perfect if your little brother or sister wanted to play with you, but really that's about it. For starters, the camera only follows player one, so whenever player two gets a certain distance off screen, they only have a few seconds before they respawn next to player one. Player two is also screwed in battles if they're fighting someone else. They'll be fighting blind since the camera doesn't give a shit about them. If player two dies, they will respawn in a few seconds, which is fine. But if player one dies, the game stops and reloads the previous checkpoint. All blocks collected by player two go straight to player one. So they're really just there to help player one. Player two doesn't have access to special moves, but they can activate and waste the special meter, which is always a plus. So basically, player two is only a little bit better than the assist player in games like New Super Mario Brothers or Mario Galaxy. It's the ultimate sibling mode. They can't prevent you from progressing when you die, but they're given just enough abilities to annoy you. I didn't even realize it had co-op until I happened to look at the back of the box after beating the game. So unless you're really desperate to play a co-op game with your friend, uh, I would avoid that mode altogether. Just stick to the single player. Overall, Knack is a pretty good launch game. It has its faults, and I definitely wouldn't pay more than $10 to $15 for it, 
but if you're looking for a simple platformer and you kind of want to see what the beginnings of the PlayStation 4 was like, definitely pick it up. Thank <laughs> you. 